All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining. I'm so super excited for you guys to be here for our first esports live stream with a business administration student, Craftina. Um, she's super excited to be here with you all, and I'm going to let her introduce herself to you all today. Hi, hey everyone. Nice to meet you. I'm Craftina, and today we are going to play some Tunic. Yes, I'm super excited. I've never played Tunic before, but I'm excited to see how the gameplay works out. And I'm sure everyone in the chat is as well. I see we have a couple of people tuning in. Um, feel free to let us know what country you are joining from in the chat. Um, uh, Craftina, do you want to tell everyone which country that you're currently streaming from? Oh, from Argentina. That's awesome. As you guys know, we have um, students from over 200 countries across the world at University of the People. So it's super exciting when we have a new student. Um, this is our first time we've had a student stream from Argentina onto the YouTube channel. So very exciting. And um, hi, I see we have a couple of people already letting us know. Please let us know what country you're tuning in from. I see we have someone from Qatar and from Bangladesh who's watching with us today. Hey, everyone. Awesome. Feel free to... Um, Head over to Tunic so that you can show us some of your amazing gameplay whenever you're ready, Craftina. Let me share my game screen then. Are you able to see it? Uh it's blank right now, but it might just be the game screen loading up. I do see our Yo People logo. Perfect. It just loaded up. We're good to go. I see you on this island with a lot of nice blue water all around you. I'm super excited to see how this gameplay goes. For those of you watching, make sure that you um, put your, um, what's it called? <laughs> put your quality to 720p so that you can see everything nice and clearly. Technical T just asked, are you a student at University of the People? Yes, she is. Do you want to talk about your, you know, experience here as a business administration student? I know it's kind of hard to play and talk, but feel free to do it whenever you're ready. Yes, I'm a business administration student. Um, I started around a year and a half ago. Wow. Um, it's been great so far. It's very convenient. Um, especially if you work as well as while you're studying like me, it's great to have the possibility to work around your schedule. Um, it's been an amazing experience. I really recommend everyone that can try it. To Honestly, it is the flexibility that you get from being able to, you know, work and learn. It's honestly really exciting for a lot of our students. I see we have Ken from Tanzania. He's one of our loyal esports um, live stream watchers. Thanks so much always for joining us, Ken. I hope you had a wonderful lunch. We always love to talk about good food sometimes when Ken is in the chat. Um, and we also so have Sasha. Um, thank you so much. She says, I hope we UO people students would have success in our future career. That's awesome. Thanks for those kind words. But yeah, this is our first. Yes, go ahead, um, oh, Craftina. No. You also you get got to it. Meet people all over the world while yeah. studying at the university. So yeah, it's a great experience. Definitely. Like I said before, this is the first time we've had a student from Argentina stream to the channel. So it's super exciting whenever we have new students from new countries um, streaming because we have a lot of different students from a lot of different places across the world. So we always like to make sure we have some representation across all of our um, esports live streamers, um, regardless of where they might be from, how long that they might have been here. Um, Craftina, luckily, she's been here for over a year now, so she has a lot of experience, um, you know, navigating the world of University of the People. It can be really hard um, at first, but once you get through those rough patches, you'll definitely be able to succeed and um, stay here for as long as you need in order to earn your degree. 
at the end of however many years it takes you. And this is really cool. I see like this galaxy of some sort. It's awesome. Um, I've never played Tunic before. Um, how long have you played it or how long have you known about um, Tunic overall? Oh, this is my first time playing it. Ooh, it's exciting. I really like all the graphics. Like a really cute cozy game yeah i'm a cozy gamer myself i like to play my really cozy games and just feel really happy so it always makes me happy when i see other people who are into cozy games we have some cozy games that we've played um i think two months ago we had out of ring one of our um, computer science students from um, UAE, she streamed Minecraft and we were able to see her build a house. She cooked some food, she did some fishing, you know, it was really cool. So everybody has, you know, their preferences for cozy games, but as long as you are enjoying the time that you're spending when you play, that's the most important thing about gaming. And for those of you tuning in, let us know what country you're from. Um, like Craftina said earlier, she's from Argentina. So if we have anyone who might also be from Argentina, feel free to give yourself a shout out um, as you have some representation here on the live stream today. Everyone's welcome. <laughs> yes, most definitely. This is really awesome. I'm loving the gameplay. Hey, David from Nigeria. Thanks for joining us today. I'm also Nigerian. I see that your last name is Ayodeji. I'm assuming you're Yoruba too. So shout out to all my Yoruba people who are also watching. Appreciate every single one of you for tuning in today. Ooh, this gold gate looks interesting. Ooh, that's awesome. B. Lawrence, he is a Ugandan in Qatar that is listening in today. Thank you for joining in, B. Lawrence. Appreciate you. We have SM from India. Thank you so much for tuning in. I know some people who are in here have, um, you know, seen a couple of our other live streams. For those of you who are new to this, um, the reason we started this is because um, we wanted our students to be able to showcase some of the things that they do in their free time. University of the People is for people who end up, you know, working full time and um, learning full time. But even with working full time and learning full time, people still have the opportunity to do video games, to art and a whole bunch of other things that they're interested in so luckily we had enough interest for esports and video games to create a live streaming group for students and technical t can i continue my study and at your people with my job yes um most definitely it's a lot of our students um 92 percent of our students actually they work full time and they also um learn full time so it definitely is possible it takes hard work it takes dedication it takes really good time management skills but it's more than possible for anyone who's interested in being a full-time student and continuing their work at whatever job that they currently have. Um, and like um, Craftina said, it's super flexible. Um, she's also already working and she's taking UO People courses. Um, how many courses are you taking this term, Craftina? Uh, now I'm only at one subject. Yeah. Um, that's also part of the flexibility of the university, like you can go from one to four subjects depending on your community GPA. Um, yeah. That's awesome because it gets you the chance to really organize yourself and your schedule accordingly if you know that in the next couple of months you're gonna go, you're gonna have extra work then yeah. you can take one or two subjects and i think that's awesome yeah most of the time a lot of our students they come in and we always advise everyone to just start off with one course um learning online is not easy it definitely takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of getting used to. So if you're someone who's never studied online before, um, starting off with one course per term, um, especially in your first year is super important. You don't wanna get overwhelmed. A lot of students come in and they're like, I'll just go ahead and be able to, you know, take five courses or take, uh, you know, three courses. But we wanna make sure that our students actually learn how to learn online. Um, and most of our students start out in a foundation course. And in your foundation courses, you'll basically be able to learn how to study online um, before you have to start taking more than one course a term. So it's a very easy transitional period. Yes. 
And yes, David, your program advisor would be able to help you with all of that information. Oh, we have someone else from um, Argentina, Craftina. Uh, Luco Nueves, I hope I said that right. He's also watching from Craftina, or from Craftina, <laughs> from Argentina. <laughs> I love the fact that you're from Argentina and your name is Craftina. It's so cute. But I'm so happy that we have some fellow um, Argentinians who are watching with us today. Nice. Yes. Are you currently studying? Yes. Are you studying? Feel free to use the chat, everyone, to talk. We like to talk in here, um, talk about learning, especially. Um, Craftina is a business administration student, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask that. Oh, Lu um, Lucho is doing the computer science bachelorate. Okay, he started this September. Congrats on starting that UO awesome. people. That's awesome. For those of you who might not be UO people students and who might just be tuning in, um, University of the People is the world's first tuition-free nonprofit nonprofit American accredited university. So we have a lot of students from all over the world. This term, we started with over 126,000 students from over 200 countries. So we're continuing to grow and expand every single day. And it's something that we're really proud of, the diversity across all of our students and you know, even our workers and course facilitators and program advisors is something that we're really proud of. And um, technical T, can I do a master's in any European university after completing my computer science bachelor's at um, University of the People? Um, it depends, but for the most part, yes. Let me put that in the chat. Um, a lot of universities have a lot of different requirements and a lot of different, um, you know, credits change differently across universities. But we've had a lot of students who are able to learn from University of the People and transfer to European universities. They're able to transfer to American universities like Harvard, um, like Princeton University, like Columbia University. And I know that European universities um, do high, um, highly value American accredited degrees. So it is very likely that you'll be able to get accepted into a European university after completing your computer science bachelor from University of People. We've had a lot of people who have um, written us stories. If you check, the, check out our LinkedIn, we have a lot of alumni on there who tell us about the positive things that they've been able to do, um, you know, in the workplace um, after earning their degree, going to get a master's or a bachelor's, or excuse me, a master's or a doctorate even after earning their degree from University of the People. So yes, it's definitely possible. Um, just make sure that you check the requirements for the university that you apply to and um, verify that University of the People is the degree that they will take. Most of them do, so you shouldn't have an issue with earning another higher education degree after you finish at UO People. Yeah. Even if now it doesn't, maybe check later on when you are trying to apply to the university or when you are kind of like finishing, like take into account that uh, an associate's degree takes you two years and right. a bachelor takes you four. So in that meantime, it's very much likely that more universities are going to start working with University of the People. Right. And we do partner already with a lot of major universities across um, the U.S. I know not everyone is actually from the U.S., so um, it might not apply, but we do have a lot of academic partners. We have partners with the U.N., we have um, um, we are we have academic partnerships with like New York University, Harvard Business School Online, McGill University, the University of Edinburgh. Um, we have some UN partnerships, so like the United Nations Educational, um, Scientific, and Cultural Org Organization, also known as UNICEFCO. Uh, we also have a UN partnership with the Sustainable Development Solutions Network. 
Um, we have a UN, we're also partnered with UN Refugee Agency. We have some corporate partners like Google, Pfizer, Twitter, Facebook, Microsoft, HP, um, and also some charitable partners that we work, it, work with like Open Educational Global. So it's really important that our students know that not only are you gonna be able to find a really cool network, and be able to you know meet people and talk with people from different countries and different um, backgrounds and cultural backgrounds but you'll also be able to find different partnerships within the university to help yourself in the long run and potentially you know even find a job or find um, a network within these organizations after you graduated and while you're attending the university of the people i see we have some more people joining in Thank you all so much, um, Shaquille um, from Bangladesh. Thank you for watching. And uh, I hope I'm saying this right, Kizar. Thank you as well for that question. Is the degree recognized globally? How about um, Asian countries like India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh? Yes, it is. Uh, we do have a lot of students from those countries who are able to get a job afterwards. So it's really important to know that you're not just here getting a, de a degree that's going to be recognized in the United States. Oh, excuse me. You're also going to be getting a degree that's recognized in other countries. I recently just had an interview with a UO People alumni. He's from Nigeria. Um, he recently got his master's in business administration from University of the People, and he has a job. Um, he has multiple jobs, actually. He works really hard. He's worked for companies in China. He's worked for companies in the UK. He's worked for companies in the United States, all remotely. Um, his experience being able to learn remotely with University of the People ultimately helped him find a lot of remote work after he graduated with his, with his MBA. And when he mentioned that he got his MBA from University of the People, it was highly regarded, highly respected. They know the amount of work that goes into earning a degree from University of the People, especially because all of our programs are highly rigorous. So you will not have to worry about getting a degree that is not going to be taken seriously because a lot of our students get to work for a lot of major corporations and companies and charities after finishing at University of the People, not only in the U.S., but also in countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, China, Nigeria, Argentina, anywhere you can think of, we have students who are able to work after they've earned their degree from University of the People. And I see Caveman is here. Welcome back. It's been a while. Thank you so much for watching. I'm happy you were able to finally catch one of our live streams as they're going live. Of course, Kizar, I'm glad that you were able to ask that great question. I'm sure that someone else has probably thought of it. So thank you so much for asking that question and, um, you know, giving us a little bit of something to talk about because a lot of people always wonder and it's super important for us that people know you can get a degree um, from the University of the People and work in the country of your origin. And Technical T, can I get a 100% um, scholarship for the computer science program? Yes, um, for our undergraduate degrees. So we don't offer scholarships, unfortunately, for our graduate degrees, just because they're a bit different in terms of um, the need. And um, a lot of people just really need that bachelor's degree in order to get their foot in the door. Having a master's degree is also important, but it's not technically required for a lot of countries to have a master's degree in order to get, you know, a higher paid job or a salary job, which is why we don't offer scholarships for them. But we know a lot of students need a bachelor's degree in order to qualify for any job that can actually sustain them in the long run, which is why we typically only give out scholarships for undergraduate degrees, not just in computer science, but also in health science, business administration, um, and those are our other <laughs> three programs. We only have health science, computer science, and business administration undergraduate degrees. We have um, only a master's in education. There isn't technically a bachelor's of education. That's not really a common thing, at least not in the United States. Most people just major in education and get their like bachelor's of science or bachelor's in something else. So um, yes, so you can get a 100% scholarship depending on your need if you're interested in an undergraduate computer science degree. Hey, Arzine, thank you so much for watching. So happy to see you joining us in. And please help, how can I apply for the scholarship? Technical T, you have to apply to University of the People first. So once you apply, um, I'll drop the link in the chat for you. 
there is an apply now link basically that you can use at university of the people it is basically uh it's pretty affordable we have a small application fee that our students have to spend and after that you're typically able to um go ahead and type in whatever financial assistance you might need in order to finish your degree at university of the people give me one moment to drop it in the chat so that you can save it obviously you don't have to do it right now because we're in the middle of this live stream but if you want to apply for this later on you are more than welcome to the link is going to be in the chat and um arzine i have not been able to review my classes that's fine we have a lot of students who take a leave of absence and your spot is going to be here when you get back so just reach out to your program advisor when you're ready and let them know whenever you are ready to come back they're not going to be mad they're not going to say why didn't you respond to my messages <laughs> they are going to make sure that you are ready and prepared for the upcoming turn and i see craftina is over here you got this it's over here killing all these monsters i love it <laughs> Oh, hey, Kuma Kuma. Ooh, they're moving fast. <laughs> this. That one, he's over here hitting you twice, boo. You got this. Hey, Kuma Kuma, thanks for joining us today. That's awesome that you're a nursing professional. We love seeing professionals tuning in for our live streams. Yes, Kazar, it is possible to get a partial scholarship, most definitely. Um, a lot of our students, they can't pay the full administ or administration. <laughs> they can't pay the full uh, price for, you know, the term. Um, at the end of the term, you do not get charged up front at University of the People. The only thing you pay up front is the application fee. And then after that, you basically get to learn for nine weeks for free. And then at the very end of the course is when you have to pay your course evaluation fee. If you cannot pay that fee, all you have to do is reach out to your program advisor, let them know that you're having financial difficulties and you can't pay on your own. And if it's something that you only need a partial scholarship, that's even more helpful for your program advisor to know so that you can just tell them, hey, I'm struggling. I can't pay this full price. I can only pay $50. I can only pay $100. I can only pay $150. Your program advisor will say, okay go ahead and talk to our financial team and they'll be able to get you some type of partial scholarship so you don't have to worry about paying in full. <laughs> Ken said, good job, Craftina. What do you eat to make you such a good player? What's some of your favorite foods, Craftina? I know Argentina has a lot of beautiful culture and beautiful um, meals as well. Um, you might not like Argentinian food though, so what's some of your favorite foods to eat? <laughs> um, well, that will have to be pasta. Oh, yes. I love pasta. I think pasta and noodles. Probably pasta and noodles and rice. All carbs, but I don't care. They're <laughs> definitely my favorite meals. I love them. Especially if it's spicy. I have a really big thing for spicy food. Like, even if it doesn't need to be spicy, I'll probably make it spicy just because throw some cayenne pepper or some hot sauce on it. It's like, spicy food is my go-to. And for those of you who are watching, feel free to let us know what some of your favorite foods in the chat. I feel like food is something that brings everyone together. And I personally love pasta as well. I see Technical T also likes pasta. So it's awesome that we have throw some pasta and some food emojis in the chat. No problem, Arzan. I hope that, you, that I was able to answer your question. And thank you so much for those of you who are asking questions in the chat. For anyone who might have just joined, um, this is Craftina. She, this is her first time streaming to the University of the People YouTube channel. She has um, been with University of the People for about a year and a half in our business administration program. Loving it, really enjoying it. And this is her first time streaming to the UO People YouTube channel. She also does stream on her own personal time. So if you check out our description box, you can follow Craftina on her Twitch and on her Instagram, so you can see some of the other gameplay that she does in her free time. We love to have our students um, communicate with each other outside of the classroom, outside of the live stream.
So please make sure that you follow her on Twitch and on Instagram to see some of her upcoming Let's Play or Let's Plays, her <laughs> upcoming live streams that are not going to be on the University of the People YouTube channel. You guys are doing it right in Bangladesh. I need to move there because that sounds like a, a great time. We eat rice and potatoes mostly in, in Bangladesh. Sounds like my kind of life. <laughs> I'm a serious carnivore, hence my username, I guess. I love meat, honestly. Uh, I, it's great. It tastes great. I'm like, as long as it's cooked right, you can't have it too well done sometimes. Sometimes it can be, but honestly, I don't blame you. It's great. Not Ken said it. <laughs> They're related. Yes, pasta primavera is really good. I think my favorite pasta, honestly, I don't know what my favorite, excuse me, my favorite pasta is. I think all pastas are just really good. If it's spicy, I want it. I'll eat it. Um, I think what's like the pasta I eat the most often. I feel like I eat noodles even more than pasta. I'm like a noodle fiend. I'll just like boil some noodles, make it spicy, throw in like maybe an egg and some vegetables. And then I'm happy and set for the day. I think that's what I'm going to have for breakfast after this live stream. Noodles. Yeah, it's calling my name. <laughs> Technical T, are you asking where I'm from or are you asking where someone in the chat is from? If you're asking where I'm from, I am originally from Nigeria, but I have lived in the U.S. for the majority of my life um, and recently moved out of Houston, Texas to Ohio. So kind of all over the place, but I'm always super excited to meet people from different countries, um, especially because, you know, our university is so diverse and we have over 200 students from uh, excuse me, over 126,000 students from over 200 different countries. So it's always really exciting when I get to meet different students. Also, when I get to meet Nigerian students, I haven't lived in Nigeria in decades, but I love being able to talk to um, Nigerian students and keep up to date with what's going on um, over there in that country. And yeah, cavemen and Ken, you guys might as well be related. I'm like, you got to love meat. You got to love to eat it. I'm like, it keeps you sustained. I know a lot of people are vegetarians and vegans, so I can't blame them for that. But I don't know if I could live a life without meat. I, I just love it so much. It keeps me sustained and it tastes great. It's just it's just really good. Apologies to any vegans or vegetarians who are like, I don't want to hear about meat. Boo meat. So <laughs> let's stick to the pasta conversation. I'm not mad at it. And for those of you who don't know what Tunic is or what Tunic is about, um, Tunic is kind of like a cozy game for those of you who um, like are into cozy games. Um, let me pull up a description. So for those of you who want to know about it, Tunic is played um, in like allows the player to maneuver their character. Um, the, per the character that she's currently playing obviously is a fox. If you don't know what a fox looks like, that's what it looks like on the screen. Um, it's structured similar to the Le Legend of Zelda. So for those of you who might have played the Le Legend of Zelda, you'll be able to see it. Um, and with the progress limited to certain areas of the game world until the player can collect a new weapon or an ability for the fox to use. So the purpose of the game or the method of playing is pretty random. Um, the dialogue, it comes up in a strange language. That's not a glitch. <laughs> the language is supposed to look like that in Tunic. Um, and um, selected players and things like that can be um, seen or hints towards puzzle solutions. But for the most part, the items that you end up finding are what make up the game's manual. So over time, Craftina has been able to get different things. Right now, she has a stick that she's using to battle off all these monsters. And over time, she'll eventually be able to find other weapons to use in order to protect herself. And as she finds more weapons, bigger monsters will come out. They'll get a little harder. Um, but each weapon that she finds will be able to help her get further and further into the game world and expose her to some new things that are there. Um, where, oh, thank you so much, Tunic. Uh, Tunic, <laughs> thank you so much, Technical. I appreciate that. I've actually, for those of you who don't know, I actually taught English for two years. I was a sixth grade English teacher um, for my first two years um, in 2019, um, from 2019 until 2021. Um, and then in 2021, I found this job with the University of the People, and I have been working here since last August. So it's been a little over a year now. Um, and next month, it'll be a year since we started our esports live stream. So it's very exciting that I've been able to use my, you know, English language skills as a teacher across different areas as a digital content producer now for the university. That's so yes. 
Yes, thank you, Craftina. Caveman said, I tried a vegan lifestyle for a few months last year. It didn't suit me at all. And my body went a little hot haywire. Respect to the vegans and vegetarians, though. The same thing happened to me. I tried it, and it did not work. <laughs> um, and it was not a good idea <laughs> for me, of course. Um, of course, everyone bod everyone's body um, is different. But I learned the hard way that my body was just not receptive to it. It was like, I need iron. I need meat. I need, like, sustenance. So... I tried it out for a summer actually when I was in college um, for about three weeks and it was just like I was getting the shakes I was like not sleeping right it was my body was like where is the food where is the beef where's the chicken so <laughs> at least we tried it you know kudos to us for trying it especially because we like food I have a genuine appreciation for steak yes Ken Texas has some great steaks I will miss that about Texas because the steaks out there were good. Like the, they say everything's bigger in Texas. Like those steaks were huge. Oh Lord. Uh, yes, but Craftina, what are some things that I know you said that you're working um, full time as well as a student? Uh, what are some things that you either have to do for work or that you just enjoy doing in your free time? Oh, I see you just. Uh oh, what just happened? I see you just. What this machine did, I hope something good. Yeah, it opened up the door. Ooh. Um, I well, just have to get past this I monster. Work remotely, so. Oh, awesome. You're just like me. <laughs> so, at the moment, I'm working as an online moderator. Ooh. So, you have experience. We're kind of We're kind of the same, you know responding to comments doing live streams that's really awesome i'm happy that now you're on the side of the live streamer and i can moderate for you so that you can have some fun in the gaming world it was a nice opportunity to be on the other side yeah <laughs> Ooh, medium rare. I don't think I've ever, I've never done, um, I know some people try rare steaks, but I need it to be cooked a little bit. I usually go for like a medium or a medium rare. That's a good one. I had to stop getting well done once I became an adult because I do not want to be chewing on leather when I'm here. <laughs> yeah, it's too hard. It's way too hard. These are, oh, guard captain. These guys look huge. Hey, Sabri, anyone played Wild Rift? Not yet, but there are a lot of other games we've played so far on the YouTube channel. We played Minecraft, we played Destiny 2 a couple days ago, or was it last week? There are a lot of games out there that we're playing, so feel free to check out our esports um, playlist. I'm going to go ahead and put that in the chat so that you guys have it. And for anyone who's interested, we also have a Discord, but this is the link to our esports playlist on YouTube. Yes, apologies, Sabri. Hopefully in the future, um, one of our students will be able to play, play it. As of right now, the reason we haven't played it is because we don't have any students that play it. And all of these students, they um, these are games that they have on their own. So it's definitely something that uh, we don't want students to have to pay for just to stream to the channel. We want to make sure that they're streaming games that they've already bought. So it's not an extra cost to them. Because like we said before, we give a lot of students um, scholarships. We help them financially. So we don't want to put a burden on them by asking them to buy a game um, that they might not already have. And um, Free Fire, have you ever played Free Fire, Craftina? I don't think I've ever heard of that game myself. Um, Oh no! Can... Uh, oh, you got I it. So play cool. Fortnite. Oh, Fortnite. That's awesome. That's another one of my regular games. Uh, no, I haven't had the chance to play Fortnite. Yeah, there are so many games out there. Actually, I'm going to search how many video games are there in existence. How many video games <laughs> are there in the world 2022? Let's see. There are over 800 and 831,000 
games in total as of 2022 as of may 2022 so it's close to a million video games for people to play so it's really important that you know we might not have every game that everyone plays but it's important that you guys can see some different gameplay from our youtube channel if you check out our playlist like i said before we've had gameplay with destiny 2 we've had minecraft we've had um, magic of the gathering uh, which is like a card game we've had um like the uh, league of legends things like that so it's really awesome that we have the opportunity for students to play different types of games and see different types of gameplay throughout their time at university of the people and tunic is a newer game so for those of you who might be like oh i didn't know about tunic um it is a newer game it did come out this year, so um, this is actually our first time seeing it on the Yo People YouTube channel. And what about PUBG? PUBG is on our approved game list. Um, we haven't had a student play it yet, but we do have one student um, who likes to play it. So hopefully he can stream to the YouTube channel um, before the end of the year so you guys can see his gameplay. And uh, do you have any students who join Google after a computer science degree? Yes, we've had plenty. We had a ton of students actually who, um, who joined Google after getting their CS degree. Um, we also had a couple students who joined Google after earning their MBA. Um, so if you're interested in like a business, even their bachelor's in business administration. Um, so after graduating from UO people, um, they've definitely been able to, you know, have these opportunities to work at these major corporations and these major companies. So it's definitely possible if you're someone who's interested in working at Google, Google is one of our um, partners. Um, if you want to check out all of our partners at the university, I'm going to drop this in the chat. Partners, we have academic partners, we have um, nonprofit partners, and all of those things in between. Caveman said this game is really cute though. Been playing Ridden Ring recently though. Amazing game and Punishing 2. Yes, that's awesome. awesome. Yes. I really love cozy games. Same. Like Stardew Valley. Really enjoy. Like the music, the series. Exactly. It's something that's really exciting. Um, you know, there's always a little like nice aspect to cozy games. You know, you always get the opportunity to see something nice. The visuals are really comforting. Even the games that have like, um, like you know, fight scenes and stuff like that, you still get an opportunity to, um, you know, just check out different things that are happening regardless. And yes, we actually do have a student who's working at um, NASA. His name is Rodrigo. Um, I'll go ahead and share the video that he actually has on our YouTube channel. Uh, let me at who said that was a technical T or yes, caveman. It was caveman. I'm going to at both of you. Oh, Elden Ring. Oh, Elden Ring is hard. That's a hard game, caveman. You're 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 dedicated for that one. Lots of great things happening at NASA and space space, ex uh, space exploration in general. Yes, um I don't know if you guys have seen the recent picture that they took with um like I think the newest Hubble telescope but it's amazing the amount of galaxies and stars and constellations and things like that that are out there in the world. You know, we're just a tiny little speck in a immersive and vast galaxy. So it's super cool that he's able to work for a company like NASA who gets to explore those different things across the globe and across the outer space. Like, 
I always have loved space. I'm like, one day maybe I'll be a scientist or an astronaut so I can, you know, learn some things about space. But I've always found that it was super interesting. Um, it's something that's super unexplored. I think the only other thing that's less explored that's less explored than space is the ocean. But the ocean scares me. I don't know how to swim. <laughs> so <laughs> I try to avoid going too far deep in there. Oh yeah, did the test launch work this time? I know that they had to reschedule it a couple of times. Um, they did one, I think they tried to do one last month and it did not go well. Um, so I hope that this time around the test launch actually worked and they didn't have to, you know, lose out on money again, because I'm sure it's super expensive to have to prep for these things. And clearly they don't want to send anyone or any space or anything into space without it being as secure as possible. So. Better safe than sorry. For those of you just tuning in again, we are watching um, Craftina play Tunic, which is one of our newer games on the YouTube channel. And this is also her first time streaming on the YouTube channel. She's been doing a really great job. For those of you who are interested in watching some of her live streams on her own time as well, make sure to um, follow her on Twitch and on Instagram so that you can keep up to date with everything. Yes, Ken, I definitely agree. Um, there's really amazing the amount of like innovation and the amount of cool things that scientists and all the hard workers um, have put into making space more accessible to the general public. You don't have to work at NASA to be able to check out some of the like, I think they have a couple of like feeds where you can just kind of go online and see like a picture of space or what's happening up there. Um, even I think the Mars router has um, or rover has a couple of um, cameras that are like always on and working so it's really good that everyone has um that chance to see the world okay says so spacex launch and return to its launching pad um it had this was a fuel tank test launch though not the rocket that's on the 27th i think that's awesome thanks for telling us that and thanks for keeping us in the loop caveman awesome I'm, I'm loving the gameplay honestly Praxina. even though it's your first time playing i feel like you're holding on pretty well <laughs> i did die a lot but still <laughs> when you when you fall down you have to keep getting back up and you did it every time with no complaints that's iconic <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Maximo. Thanks for joining. And yes, honestly, Ken, I'm definitely having pasta today. Pasta and noodles. Like something. With some meat. <laughs> That's awesome, Sabri. We actually do have a couple of students who um, play League of Legends. Also, we've had a lot of students who have been able to play League of Legends. Um, I think twice we've had them so far um, on our esports playlist. Um, out of Ring, she streamed League of Legends um, both times. And another time she streamed with Rexy Rock, um, who was one of our esports streamers last year. So, yeah, it's definitely on our YouTube channel if you want to check out um, what one of our live streams for League of Legends. I will share the link to the esports playlist in the chat. Yes, I agree, Caveman. She's doing a great job. Can I like the style? You know, great minds think and eat alike, so you have to love it. <laughs> Yeah, feel free to let us know this is the beginning of a new academic term um, or a new academic year. So I hope everyone's been having a good one so far. I know it can be hard starting off, but I believe in all of you. And I'm sure you guys are going to do great things and get to the end of the term with a great GPA and learning a lot of great things. Hey, Nguyen, thanks for joining as always. Great to see you again. Yeah, this game is not easy, but she's doing a great job. Um, is this game free? Um, I'm sure. Craftina, is Tunic free? Uh, no, I believe it was free on Epic a few months ago. Okay. So you may want to check the next upcoming games on Epic that they will listen to. It's not a really expensive game and I believe now it's on promotion like 
Yeah. I know there's a lot of websites you can buy games for like half price on too, so I'm sure you guys will find something out there for a cheaper price. And that's so awesome, Caveman. Um, he said last turn was tough, but he did well. His GPA was around 3.9, so he's looking forward to this turn too. I'm super happy for you. Glad you were able to kill it in the academic game. And I'm sure while you were playing Elden's Ring as well. <laughs> I agree, Wen. Um, Wen said that this game has a vibe of Animal Crossing in a way for Nintendo Switch. Agreed. I think that I really want to get a Nintendo Switch this uh, fall. I think I'm going to get one for Black Friday because it'll be on sale and I want to start doing some Switch games. So if you guys have any suggestions for fun games to play on the Nintendo Switch, feel free to let me know in the chat. I'm a, I'm a chill gamer. I, I think I might get like, um, what do you call it? Animal Crossing. I've heard good things about it, but I'm not sure how, how badly I want it. But I like to play some of the old classics like Mario and things like that. So that's my the thing I'm most excited for. On Nintendo Switch, being able to play those old school games again. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be busy, Ken. Most definitely. I'm excited for Black Friday this year. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm also, I'm contemplating if I want to do Black Friday or Cyber Monday, especially because most of the stuff I want are like tech, tech upgrades. I haven't done any Black Friday shopping in probably like three years. Like I didn't, I've just like been saving but now it's time to treat myself and get a little something for myself. So I'm going to just, I'm always trying to be frugal and save as much as I can. So I did not want to buy anything. Now, if you guys want to make a big purchase, just wait a month and a half. Black Friday is November, I think 25th this year or 26th. So you'll have the opportunity to, no, I think it is the November 25th. So you'll have the opportunity to get what you need for cheap. Thank you for letting me know that one. I didn't know that there was even an online pass. Thanks for that too. <laughs> yeah, old school Black uh, Black Friday. I haven't really, I haven't really seen things like that in a while. One um, that always makes me scared. <laughs> That always makes me scared because um, there's so many people, especially at least in the U.S. I don't know how many other countries do um, Black Friday shopping because I know it's like an after Thanksgiving thing and Thanksgiving is more of like a U.S. holiday. But um, I know a lot of people who do go Black Friday shopping do stand in lines, especially if it's for like in front of Best Buy or in front of Target and things like that. So maybe I'll actually go in person this year and, you know, sit down and you know stand in line get a tent or something but cyber monday deals are also pretty good so i'll see what i'm feeling by november and prepare myself for the best and the worst <laughs> oh i hope you can stream as well caveman hoping you can And said i definitely do black friday if i was in the u.s yeah it's like a rite of passage you just have to you have to try it once just just to see how you like it i remember the first thing i ever bought when i actually went out on black friday i was in high school and i bought bought like this disney sweater like super huge oversized sweater it was originally like 60 bucks at forever 21 and i got it for 15 dollars that day i was like yeah this is the right price i would never have paid 60 dollars for that sweater but the fact that it was on sale for more than half off i was like all right i can do this 15 dollars let's do it that's awesome 
Yes. We don't have that kind of deal. <laughs> Aww. I hope other countries start it because it's a great way, you know, to increase the money that gets spent on that weekend, you know, mm -hmm. have people spending it on some things that they need for more affordable prices. Yes, no, what has happened over here a lot is that they tend to rise the prices like a week before um, those promotion and then you're paying the same price <laughs> that makes a lot of sense i feel like some places do that here too like sometimes i feel like black friday prices used to be really good like used to have a lot of opportunities to like find something that was at a good deal but nowadays i feel like they do the same thing here where they end up kind of like oh it's a black friday deal but if you looked at it like two weeks before it's the same price just like maybe fifty dollars cheaper mm. so yeah yeah caveman said the guard captain is serious yeah he's a yes. tough one to be definitely he's very fast and i love that i love that so much he said that um he ken ended up doing black friday shopping when he was in the u.s and he got the best bathrobe he's ever had and the cashier lady did not want to let it go once she touched it i honestly i love a good bathrobe nice cozy comfortable so definitely Yeah, when that's a perfect thing to buy for Black Friday. Wen said the only thing he might need is earbuds and a bigger SSD. Yeah, I might have to upgrade my SSD as well. I have one that I use right now, but I kind of want an even bigger one. But we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to spend all my money on Black Friday. I have bills to pay. So <laughs> we'll see how it ends up going. I'll just divide and conquer and see which ones I want to go ahead and tackle first. And for those of you watching, we have about 29 minutes left in this live stream. We are, we are going to end it at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. So feel free to go get a, a drink, go get some water, go warm up some breakfast. Um, um, we will be watching Craftina play for another 28 minutes. It's 9.02 now. And then we'll um, go ahead and end it out for today. But I'm super excited. Um, she will be streaming again. Um, if not next week or by the end of this month um, in October. So please make sure that you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and also check out the description box so that you can follow Craftina on her Twitch and her Instagram um, moving forward. All right, I see Nguyen said, I was watching the hack. He's a YouTuber in the UK. He says there are no lines at all in the UK. The video was funny. I don't think I've ever heard of him. That's interesting. I might have to check him out. Oh, I don't think I've heard of him Yeah, I don't think I've watched the video before, but definitely something that is super fun. Thanks, Ken, for joining. Enjoy the rest of your day. Yes, you can add the link to the video. Feel free to. I'll make sure to save it and watch it later.
No problem, Ken. See you on the next live stream. Bye. You got this, Craftina. Link's not working. No problem, Nguyen. Um, I think if Craftina can finish this game, she can take it on Elden Ring. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you ever played Elden Ring before, but it's pretty difficult from what I've seen. Yeah, it's usually only from software games are quite a challenge. I haven't played Elden Ring yet. I want to, but <laughs> yeah, I'm sure maybe it'll be also for Black Friday. <laughs> maybe over there. I, I don't do it here. The thing is, we have to pay more for like uh, foreign purchases in order to oh. games. So games like that can get really, really expensive. That's awesome. I'm like, oh, that's not awesome. I'm like, <laughs> honestly, I wish that they had, I don't know, like, how. I mean, money is such a complicated thing, especially when you do, like, currency changes and tax changes, like, across country lines. So I think that is really hard to get done. But hopefully, you know, one day in the future, we can figure out a way so that you guys aren't paying, like, an extra 30 bucks for the same game that we pay for in the U.S. I think that's the one thing that I forget about. I've always been talking about moving across um moving out of the country like moving out of the u.s but i always forget about the fact that other countries do have to pay extra for certain things that costs like you know cost a little bit less in the u.s because they're u.s based products but you know it's always a pro and con to every mm. every move and to everything that you do especially as a gamer yeah it really depends on where you're going and like if you are maintaining like the same lifestyle or you no. Know, yeah. At the end of the day, it's, it's not the same to earn uh, in U.S. currency in the U.S. that it is in Latin America. Exactly. Moved out. Um, Nguyen said, if I moved out of the U.S., the U.K. is the one place I want to go. They have a lot of resources for free, food, and help when needed out there. Yeah, the U.K. is actually pretty awesome. You know, I think the Queen just passed away recently, but you know, the U.K. has a lot of good things out there.
doing it. Bad team, no, you got this. That car is hard. <laughs> it is. I'm like, these boss levels, I'm like, for a cozy game, it's stressing me out. <laughs> I hear video games are cheaper in Brazil and Argentina too. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. Maybe Brazil, but I'm not sure. Are are they cheaper? Compared to the US, yes, if you compare like the currencies. <laughs> oh wow. I might have to move out there. <laughs> I love a cheap video game. Yeah, Luckily in the US. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Argentina. Or Argentina. <laughs> Craftina. <laughs> yeah, I have seen what? a lot of people like um, buying games here, like you've seen a VPN. Yeah. Like a lot of people use VPNs across the world. I feel like a lot of people in the US don't really know how to um, use it as frequently, mm -hmm. but I think that is something really important that, you know, everyone should know how to use just a little bit. Like, oh wow! Globally available. That's kind of like uh, how it's market at the moment. Wow! Yeah, that's the thing. Having a VPN, it's it's uh, useful when you have one, but it's also really important to know that you know they can get a little expensive sometimes. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're doing your research to find the right one. I know a lot of countries require VPNs to visit like certain U.S. websites and things like that. So really important to know. The thing about the car is that it doesn't stop attacking even if you are a hero. Oh no! I'm like, I got a break! <laughs> Can I have a, a breather? It just keeps going and going like the Energizer Bunny. Like, come on! Yeah, it's really weird. That it doesn't even get like a step back or Um, Caveman said online game copies can be crazy expensive in South Africa too, but if you know where and when to shop, you can get way cheaper disc games, but no one wants the handle of handling discs all the time. Yeah, I actually haven't bought a disc game since I was a kid. That's a really good point.
And I heard recently, I think the PlayStation Store is being sued for um, like the their prices because a lot of game developers have to charge more for their games because the PlayStation Store takes a cut mm-hmm. out of whatever purchases that people are making on there. Even if it's not a disc, the fact that it's an online game, they're still charging um, the gaming developing co- companies and ultimately the consumers extra um, for getting an online copy of a game. So it's kind of ridiculous. I'm glad that somebody you know, decided to say something and stand up against that because, you know, gamers do carry a lot of companies. Like, a lot of people wouldn't play games or even find out about games. I'm sure a lot of people even here today wouldn't have even known about Tunic if you didn't stream it to the channel um, for your people. So it's really important to know that, you know, that people are there looking out for us even when the gaming companies might not do it. (laughs) Mm. Yes. The big companies to take advantage of. Yeah. So it's great to speak up. Like, there was a controversy a while back about um, companies that sells the video game, like Epic or Steam, Yeah. Because their fees were like the revenue that the developers were getting was really really low compared to the selling price of the games wow that's really crazy you know i wish that the companies actually cared more about everyone who was playing the games because it's really difficult to be someone who's a full-time gamer who has to pay for everything out of pocket especially when you're starting out um so you know, hopefully they can be more considerate about the fact that everyone who plays games might not have the money or income to play all the games that we want. Um, but, you know, it's just going to take time for them to understand that. And Caveman said, good job. I see you finally got it to this section. We love to see it. It took time, but it took perseverance. One thing you can't do is ever give up. layer a new place for us to see in the game you're actually getting pretty far considering this is your first time ever playing it Payment said, I've got some discs for my console, but they're very inconsistent. The thing about online copies is that it takes a good number of years to drop in price to become affordable. That part, honestly, it's really frustrating sometimes. I wish that video games were a lot more affordable, but also they are paying a lot of people. They're paying the animators, they're paying the um, game developers, they're paying the marketing team. You know, there's a lot of parts that go into making a game and promoting a game, but you know, you would think that they would find more funding or, you know, better ways to bring in money other than just charging the consumer. But, you know, a lot of games, too, they'll charge you to buy the game and then they'll also include in-game purchases. Those are, like, my pet peeves type of games. Like, why do I have to spend extra money after I've already paid for the game to get the things that I want? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. I honestly don't really like games with my personal sections. Yeah. Like I feel like if you're buying a game, 
that you buy buy everything that comes with the game. I don't want to have to keep buying tiny add-ons. I already paid for the game itself. Yeah. Like, I don't mind if it's just, like, a skin for the character. Like, it's... Yeah. That, that's reasonable. Because you don't technically need that. Yeah. That's a... Yeah. It's optional if you want it. If I don't you leave it there. But, yeah. like, when you have to... Like, you're pressured to buy something extra because you cannot advance on the game. That's really annoying. Yeah. Even some, a lot of the mobile games are like that too. really fancy. I really like how blue the water is. That might just be random, but <laughs> I like it. I love these little. Yeah, confused as we are. <laughs> like, oh, Honestly. No. <laughs> No, I really love all the animations. It's really hard to. I'll, one day, maybe I'll tune in and you know join in a video game <laughs> company or something. Awesome. Yeah, and like play with them because it's super interesting, you know, to be able to see how video comes or video game comes to life. I know it takes a lot of work, a lot of trial and error, a lot of mm. A/B testing, and all those things. So it's really awesome. Yeah. Sealed forever. Sealed forever. <laughs> Are those trees right? Okay, just making sure. I think those are trees. <laughs> they look just triangular, but I guess they are trees. Ooh, telescope. So Super cool. Full view yeah, so you finally know what you're gonna have to work towards. those of you still watching thank you all so much for doing so make sure to like this video and subscribe to the uo people channel and check out the description box so that you can follow tina on instagram and on twitch so that you can see all of her other awesome gameplay we have about five minutes left in the live stream so i want you guys to know that and make sure that you subscribe to the channel and follow um christina or christina <laughs> craft tina 
follow Craftina on all of her social media pages so that you can see her do some more tunic gameplay and some of her other favorite gameplay on her personal channels. Oh, that's awesome. Now I feel like I have to play all Elden Ring. There's so many games I want to try out. I think next year I'm just going to kind of like try one new game a month. There are a lot of free games out there, but maybe like buy one new game a month. I'm a huge simmer, so I spend a lot of my time playing The Sims. Apparently The Sims 5 might be coming out soon. Who knows? Um, but I think it's a really good time to just kind of expand my... Um, you know my gaming realm I've, I've really been excited this last year that i've been able to help moderate with our uo people students and seeing all their different gameplay so i might just have to try out all the games we've live streamed to the channel myself and see which one i like the most The Sims is awesome. I'm always going to advocate for it. I play all of them. I play The Sims 2, The Sims 3, and The Sims 4. <laughs> so it's definitely something that I enjoy. Um, I sometimes live stream them to my TikTok and to my YouTube channel. So it's something that's super fun for me. Um, and everybody plays it in a really different way. So try it out. Actually, on October 17th, The Sims is going to be free for everyone to buy. So don't buy it now, <laughs> just wait until October 17th and you can head over to EA and the game is going to be free for everyone. Yeah, and they just announced it uh, last, or I think they announced it this week that they're going to be releasing it for free. So um, for anyone who, you know, is interested in trying it out, October 17th, you'll have a chance to. Nice, I haven't played this since in years. Yeah. It's really immersive. It's kind of like virtual reality, but on a computer. You can play it on PC, Xbox, and uh, PS4. Yes, it's going to be free on all platforms. Yep. So no matter what you're playing on, October 17th, The Sims 4 is going to be free for everyone. Just the base game, though. Not all the games. Just the base game will be free. And they have a lot of expansion packs. So um, you can buy certain things. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with seasons, but you can buy certain things like the seasons. Um, you can buy the university. I think there's like a dine out pack and stuff. There's a whole bunch of smaller packs that are anywhere from like five to thirty dollars extra. But at least if you start off with the base game, you'll have that for free. And there's a lot of different things that you can use in the base game. They've added a lot of updates over the years um, to the base game so that you can play that over time. And we have about two minutes left in the live stream. We're still watching Craftina, our Argentina student from um, the business administration program who has been killing it and got really far in the game. This is her first time ever playing and she just killed that boss. Like, yes, so excited about her gameplay. Turn. All right, we got about one minute, so I'm going to let her kill these monsters. You got it. Make it count. Yes, we love to see it. 
Um, thank you so much, Crafts Tina, for um, live streaming to the YouTube channel today. Do you want to say a couple of words? Make sure to follow her on all of her socials. It's in the description box. Um, and go ahead and let them know anything you have to say to them before we end our stream for today. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you got the chance to um, clear up some doubts about the university and that you enjoy the streaming and hope to see you next time. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Craftina. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night no matter what, where in the country or world you might be, and we will see.